Welcome back to quantitative reasoning. Last time we learned that the function any can tell us whether a logical vector contains a true element. This information is useful, but if any returns true, we still don't know which element in the argument is true. In this tutorial, we learn that we can find the answer with the function which. We'll also learn that we can find the index of the minimum value in a numeric vector with which.min. Similarly, which.max returns the index of the maximum value. Let's start with a simple example. Here is a logical vector. Z gets C, true, true, false, false, true. If we pass Z as argument to the function which, the output are the indices of Z that are true. For example, which in parentheses Z returns a 1 because the first element of Z is true. Which in parentheses Z also returns 2 because the second element of Z is also true. But which in parentheses Z doesn't contain 3 because the third element of Z is false. In practice, which is usually applied to a much longer vector than our example vector Z. For instance, in our previous tutorial, we noticed that the age of some travelers on the Titanic is unknown, but we couldn't easily identify where these travelers are located in the Titanic data frame. Thanks to the which function, this task is now a piece of cake. The output shows that there are three travelers with unknown age, and they are in the rows 729, 1127, and 1457 of the Titanic data frame. We can use these row indices to find out the family names of these three travelers. Let's first assign the result of the which function to a variable w. And then we use w to subset Titanic dollar fam name. In this example, the detour via which isn't really necessary. We could have found the same information by directly using is.na in parentheses Titanic dollar age in the square brackets after Titanic dollar fam name. But if subsetting involves a logical vector that contains NA, the detour via which can sometimes be worthwhile. A nice feature of which is that it doesn't contain indices of NA values. For example, let's append NA at the end of the vector Z. Which, in parentheses Z, still returns the same vector as before. Suppose we want to use Z to subset another vector. For example, players gets C, Rachel, Tatiana, Noah, Quentin, Aisha, Warren. If we subset players by Z, the last element is NA. By contrast, if we subset players by which in parentheses Z, the NA element is removed. Neither of these two subsetting methods is better or worse. They are different, and one should think carefully in each application whether it's more appropriate to keep or remove NA in the result. Closely related to which are the functions which.min and which.max. Which.min finds the index of the minimum element in the argument and which.max finds the index of the maximum. For example, here is how we find the row in the Titanic data frame that contains the oldest traveler. There is one caveat to which.min and which.max. They return a single index even if there are multiple equally small minima or multiple equally large maxima in the data. For example, the minimum age of travelers is zero. With a sum function, we can find out how many travelers had this minimum age. Let's first assign the result of the min function to a variable called min underscore age. Then we use the equals equals operator. We conclude that there were nine travelers who were still in their first year of life. Which.min only returns the row index of one of these travelers. Here's a small challenge for you. Can you come up with a method that returns the row indices of all nine travelers whose age is equal to the minimum? If you need a hint, take a look at the documentation at question mark which.min. Here's a summary of this tutorial. We can find the indices of true elements in a logical vector with the which function. Which eliminates NAs from the result. This feature can sometimes be convenient. Which.min returns the index of a minimum element in a numeric vector. The corresponding function that finds the index of a maximum element is which.max. In the next tutorial, we learn how we can compute summary statistics of data subsets. See you soon.